So, Holly's getting a D-shed treatment. Let me tell you something. She is awful. Now, let me tell you, uh, she's in my care. I can say anything about her. I want to. So, uh, in other words, she's staying with me until I figure out whether I'm going to keep her or adopt her out. Um, <laughs> she's terrible for a bath. It was she was my friend's dog, and I went there and did her. You know, I forget that dogs have their difficulties sometimes because once we're all done with everything, we're all good. Uh, but I think that was like mid July, and um, but I still don't remember her being this bad. Then again, she was you know was on a mobile. And she was at home. I remember I had to hold on to her. I remember that. <laughs> but I also uh, believed that by the end we were good. I was going to do it on, on the floor. I'm getting so much hair. Oh my God. Ugh, it's amazing how much hair they shed. And the thing about shepherds is, and I just want to show you just a little. Uh, the thing about shepherds is, and dogs like them, can stink so bad, and it's and the stink is in their undercoat. And <laughs> see, this is nothing. This is nothing. She has a thousand times more than this in her coat. Uh, and she was just done, like I said, I think two and a half months ago, July, whatever. Okay. Uh, so from this point, it's going to be loud, but I'm going to take the sound off. But what you will be seeing is, uh, groomers are, are very prone to carpal tunnel syndrome. A lot of it is because, uh, they keep raking out undercoat dematting dogs all of that i learned when i was in my 40s replacing groomers that were in their 20s because they could no longer do the work that uh the more you let your dryer work the less you have to work manually and that's why i'm 64 and i don't have carpal tunnel syndrome all right here you go <laughs>
dryers, force dryers. This is uh, She Landy and I think I paid, I don't know, it was like 60 to 70 dollars if that much, might have been less, I don't know. Uh, but there's other ones like, what was that, pig, some flying pig, the flying pig. They're also reasonable and we groomers use them too. They're very, very effective and they're effective on a professional level so I know they'll work on a pet owner uh, level as well um, there's, there's you know nothing pink. wow I guess I got you on cement so much huh you don't need those back ones done just tips tip 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 no Stop. You're too big. No. 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 How do you not have a long dew claw? I don't get it. I don't get it. You bite your nails? Doesn't look like it. And you'll even notice if you bathe your double and triple coat dogs and you're like, man, they still stink. That's because the undercoat is still there. And that's the magic <laughs> that combers do with a D-shed treatment. Not with just a bath. Like you go to the vet and you get just a bath, a vet bath, and not a groomer D-shed. Then you ain't getting what this is right here. You're basically getting what you could do at home because they're just bathed and put into a dryer, a cage with a dryer. That's like a typical vet bath that you might pay for a dog this size $20 or $30 for. It's, nobody's working the coat. Nobody is uh, getting the undercoat out. Now, if the, if the vet has a, a groomer, and it's a grooming appointment. I mean a professional groomer. 
and not a tech, a professional groomer, then they're going to go in and get it done. Oh my gosh, you've lost weight. <laughs> You got no fat on you, girl. Tell me your secret. You sure were heavy to get in the tub, though. Oh, my Lord, Holly. I know why you're panting. I forgot to turn the air on. Fan's going, but I didn't turn the air on. I'm sweating right along with you. We're all right. We're okay. And Holly, really, honestly, what I'm doing now is just showing you some things. I spend a lot longer <laughs> <laughs> Woo! on clients' dogs than I'm spending on Holly. And that's because I can work on her every day a little bit if I want to because she's here. What do you think guys? Should I adopt her out or keep her? She's staying right underneath me now that her husband's been uh, reunited with his favorite person on the planet. Boy, I loved him too, but when I found out that Amy was crying ugly over not having, well, no, she didn't start crying ugly over until I said, I made a decision. He's yours. <laughs> he stopped by and he's yours. And uh, he went with her yesterday. And they, I've just getting, been getting so many photographs of the two of them and his siblings and all that good stuff. His jealous brother. <laughs> and, uh, oh, this is the Sleekies. I use it quite a bit. I'm not a fan of the Furminator. Sleekies actually does get that undercoat. The Furminator will rip and strip. If you take a good look at the Furminator, it's the same as uh, oh, 40 blade, the cutting side of a 40 blade. Um, if I can find it, I'll show you. Looks just like it. I used to keep around a furminator that I bought when I bought into the hype. Uh, and then I saw what kind of damage it does to the coats. And I was like, yeah, you are a piece of garbage. And it's, it's you know, it, it fools you because you, you're going to see hair. Because it's ripping it out. Ripping it, stripping it, breaking it. Because it's a blade. <laughs> This is a 40 blade, and ugh. I don't want to take it all the way out because it's a pain in the ass to get back in, but I'll slide it partially out. So Furminator is this. You know, on the side and the underside is here. So, this is a cutting blade. And you can just use a 40 blade to rake this stuff up. In the olden days, we just used a blade. And then somebody decided that in, invented the Firminator and invented it. Uh, to use what's constructed to be very much like a 40 blade. Rips and strips. Now 
This one grabs the undercoat. No ripping, no stripping. And you can tell that the 40 blade uh, is, is cutting and pulling because if you stay in one place, which was how I discovered it, you will make a bald spot. It doesn't care if it's undercoat or top coat. It will take it all. I swear, when these plush German Shepherds, which are the longer coat German Shepherds, when they start strutting this stuff, whew, after they get these shit, their butts are just waving in the wind. I should take her out after this so she can have her butt hair switching in the wind. Ain't that right, Holly? Oh gosh. I have you stuck to my face. Yes, I do. Okay, good. Let me just. Okay, good. Uh, that lets me know because I got hair laying on top of it. It lets me know if I have more to go. I have more to go right about here. Let's see. This is good. And let's see. That's not bad. I got next to none on the other one, on the other part. Okay. I think that's one. Yeah, so we're good. I'm not going to mess with her no more that area to work up here. And when I'm working on you guys dogs, I just keep working it until I've only got like no more than three hairs, two, three hairs in a given area coming up. Because like I said, I can do her whenever so I don't have to be that fastidious about it but it's nice not to have the hair all over the place not so much matters for the shop because <laughs> that's what the shop does it does hair well Miss Holly's undercoat odor was stinking the place up Smelling like a D.O.G. Imagine that. Imagine smelling like a dog. Huh. The nerve. I'm not going to bore you too much longer. Showing you some of the tools that I use. Uh, talk to you about the dryer. Oh, this is uh, 
sometimes known as a utility comb, uh, sometimes known as a poodle comb. This is great for dolls like this. It's even great for Samoyeds. Uh, breeder of Samoyeds was the one that turned me on to it because uh, like groomers using a tool like this, a Samoyed breeder would not use a tool like that. Uh, they're not trying to remove undercoat. The uh, undercoat is part of the whole look. But they do need to get through the coat. And, uh, you know, so there's no, no matting and stuff built up. And this goes right into it. My son purchased this by accident. Oh, no, I think I purchased it for him. I thought it was what he wanted, but it wasn't. But then, he, after he started using it on his grooms, he was like, oh, this is this this is the best <laughs> this is the best tool I got the, the uh, best comb I've got and it is it's awesome it will address so many things and uh, some of you with dogs like this these kinds of coats are told you're not supposed to have to ever bathe them that's a you're not supposed to ever have to bathe them a lot. Uh, yeah, you do. And then the other one is, you're not supposed to bathe them often. That one's partially true, depending on what it is you're using to bathe them in. You know, <laughs> because that little tidbit has to do with soaps. Shampoo soaps. The shampoo I make is organic. There is no soap in my shampoo. Uh, <coughs> soap dries. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, has so many additives and crap in it. For example, Dr. Bronner's is not soap. It is not drying. It's uh, uh, a body wash. And my shampoo is a shampoo. It's a wash. I also use it for myself as a body wash. And, uh, and and as a shampoo for myself. And uh, so, yeah. And I make it my from scratch. All me. And that's the only thing I bathe the dog in. Unless you got nerve enough to come in here with some fleas. And uh, then I got a... Oh, gosh. I hate using chemicals. I don't use harsh chemicals. I don't use pesticides. Put it like that. But, uh, I have to do what I have to do to take care of the fleas. But, you know, that's a $20 fee. And, um, I don't promise you dead fleas. It's a $20 flea. Because I have, my dogs come here to work with me. And I've got Sadie, who has lost half her hair. Because somebody came in here with fleas. And Hodor, who's lost half his body hair. For the same reason, for the same dog. And it's not the dog's fault. The owner's. It's too many products on the market now for you to take care of your dog's fleas. I don't want them. In the olden days, yeah, we got stuck with that crap. There wasn't anything but harsh cancer-causing chemicals out there. And we had to use them. But we don't have to do that anymore. You have too many, too many options. And, um... It is not true that dogs have to have fleas because they're dogs. It, 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 you know, that was close to true before. It's not anymore. Just be careful what you put on your dog, what you put in your dog. Do your research to find what's safest. Don't ask your vet what's safest. Your vet is a salesperson. You do the research. You. And um, take care of it because even though my shop is not going to get flea infested because if if my dogs show up with a flea that's when they get treated and I usually use Advantage Multi so that they walk around anything jumps on them dies instantly but not before my dog has already been bitten and is ha and, and is going to end up half bald because the two of them are allergic so I don't appreciate it I don't want the fleas in here. Thank you very much. 
I don't want my puppy to suffer. You're not allergic to flea. I've never seen a flea on you. Nope. You came along after the flea dog. Nope. 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 Okay. So, this is just chapter two. Same as before. Bye.